And with that, I think I will pass it off to our distinguished uh, set of panelists here. As Peter said, this is an amazing time to have this panel because the folks up here are in large part responsible for Facebook's 30% jump in share price yesterday, which was largely due to mobile. So if Mark Zuckerberg comes running on pier and asking for people to take out to dinner tonight, it's these folks right here. So there's a lot to learn, and I will uh, pass it off. Can everybody hear me? All right. My name is Jesse Puji. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Ampush. Uh, we're one of the leading SPMDs of Facebook, um, and we actually spend a lot of time investment in, in driving mobile app install ads. So it's probably 30 plus percent of our business today, uh, and it's a big part of what we do for a number of clients, many of whom are in the room. My name is uh, Sambu Makalu. I'm VP of Strategic Accounts for Nanigans. Uh, we're based in Boston with offices in San Francisco, London, uh, and New York. Uh, we're a strategic PMD, uh, focusing primarily on, uh, on Facebook as a user acquisition channel. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? My name is David. I'm the COO of Adotomy. We have been building technology on the Facebook Ads API since about 2009. We're an ads PMD, and we're focused mainly on the user acquisition for performance advertisers, a lot of games. And uh, as Jesse mentioned, a lot of the business that we see is shifting to mobile. Great. Hi. Can everyone hear me? Great. <laughs> Mandy Myshak. I'm the VP of Client Services at Shift. Um, we are a real-time marketing platform, and we work with 10 of the top 20 global advertisers, and they work with us through our open marketing cloud, which houses our proprietary application, which is our media manager solution, where we are a Facebook SPMD along with part of the Twitter API, and we run a lot of global campaigns. Thanks. Maybe um, while we start out, I'd like to hear a little bit, since we have so much experience of with Facebook throughout the years up here, if you can talk a little bit about how Facebook has evolved on the platform and where we are today. Um, for folks like me who are building a brand on mobile, it's really interesting to see how far the platform has come specifically on mobile, but you guys have been there the whole way, so maybe you can talk a little about how it's, how it's evolved over the, over the years. Yeah, sure, I'll take that. Um, so, I mean, it's really exciting uh, the way that mobile has developed on Facebook in the last few months, uh, especially since mobile app install ads came out back in, uh, I think it was around January time. We were beta testing it a little bit before that as well. And um, what's really taken off is the way that we can now measure ROI. And when Facebook released the product, you could use the Facebook SDK to essentially measure installs. But uh, through integrations with companies like Has Offers, uh, you can measure down the funnel to ROI and various KPIs. And you have a really viable, measurable performance source now on Facebook with uh, targeting options that are beyond the, the likes of which you can see on other, let's say, ad networks and exchanges. So, uh, and it, you can see from yesterday, does anybody have stocks in Facebook here? Okay, drinks are on that guy over there. <laughs> the things are taking off and it's a very exciting space to be in. I think, I mean, I'll, I'll take a quick stab at it. I, you know, when you think about what makes Facebook interesting and what made it interesting five years ago, Hello? Um, it's going in and out. Hello? 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 Okay. Um, when you think about what makes it interesting, you know, there's, there's sort of two, two big buckets that, that we think a lot about, right? One is the scale at which the platform exists, which is unparalleled in the universe um, in terms of online platforms. And, and a part of that is not just the scale, but the precision at which you can reach people and which you can message people. And that's been there for four, five, ten, whatever. It's been there forever. Uh, the second thing is the power of word of mouth referrals and kind of what we call referred intent. It's this concept of how powerful you can tap into somebody else and what a friend is saying. And I think those are the two sort of vectors upon which Facebook has continued to evolve. So if you went back when all of us probably first started, there was one right-hand side ad with a picture and a headline and a thing, but you could get really granular with how you targeted it. And since then, it's evolved tremendously for mobile, for newsfeed, for different types of ads, but all with sort of those two vectors, I think, in mind. Yeah, from, from our standpoint, we really uh, think of advertising on Facebook uh, in three broad categories. One is uh, creative, targeting, and then optimization. Um, so when mobile came out, there was a big shift in creative. So that was a big change that... Uh, um, that was, I, I think, unanticipated, at least by, uh, by Nanigans. 
when we uh, focused on performance marketing, where the goal is uh, return on ad spend, uh, previously targeting and optimizations were the key to driving performance. But as you got to new ad units on mobile that are larger, the value of the creative shot up tremendously. So that was a, a big evolution. Uh, also, uh, as you moved on to mobile, tracking uh, downstream events uh, became a lot uh, more difficult as well. So uh, to um, piggyback on what you were saying, um, tra tracking return on ad spend just became extremely difficult. But with companies like Has Offers now, uh, we're starting to bridge that gap. Yeah, and on my end, I, I agree with all of that. And I think from my perspective and what we're seeing with our customers, it allows us to look at marketing from a much more holistic view on Facebook when you introduce mobile and tracking. So what once was a very segmented medium becomes a very holistic marketing approach that our customers are able to take. Thanks. One thing that comes out as we uh, talk throughout the conference and some of the sessions I've listened to is quality. And you, you guys have seen Facebook evolve. I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about the quality of the mobile audience on Facebook. Um, clearly it has scale globally, and that's rare in mobile these days. Um, but if you could talk a little bit about what the quality is like and what you've seen and how you can you know, target the best users um, for your clients, maybe that'd be useful. I'll, I'll, I'll take that. Um, what we've seen uh, with a lot of our clients as a, as a best, best practice is that Facebook does drive um, the highest quality users in terms of return on ad spend. And again, that's what Nanigans focuses in on. It's not necessarily CPI and getting the cheapest installs possible. It's really around getting the highest uh, return on your ad spend possible. Uh, so we've seen uh, a big improvement there um, with, with Facebook. Yeah, I mean, I think the, uh, the platform is incredible, right? You have a few interesting stats off the top of my head. Some of them may not be accurate. Um, 14 hours a month are spent by the average user on mobile on Facebook. And when you combine Instagram, which is also owned by Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google+, all of them barely equal the same as just Facebook. So you've got an incredible amount of engagement on the platform. Um, one little tactical thing is when Facebook thinks about an install, they don't think about just downloading it. They actually only count it as an install when somebody opens the app. So inherently, there's more value than the typical ad network um, driving it. And you know, the scale is, is, is amazing. And then you can target people the way you want. And you know, I think um, my Facebook friends are over there somewhere, but they would tell you that on average on the web, you see 30% accuracy when you think about who you're targeting. So if you guys have ever been to Blue Kai's website and seen the registry of cookies, I'm apparently a 45 to 50 year old woman who likes spa treatments. Um, I'm, and I do like spa treatments. But um, <laughs> Facebook is 80% accurate when it comes to identity. And so you actually know who the people are that you're talking to. And I think that's really, really critical. And it lets you see much more quality from what you're doing. Yeah, I'd, I'd say where, where else can you find users representing their true identity so accurately, telling you what they like, who they are, and using the open graph, actually telling you what they do uh, on a daily basis. I, I was talking to somebody from Facebook the other day who was telling me Facebook accounts for 20% uh, of all activity on mobile, not application use, but everything that people do on mobile. So in terms of placement, in terms of engagement, it's completely unrivaled. And, with tools such as you know, lookalike audiences, when you can actually put in prototypical data of who your ideal user is based on users you already have. And Facebook actually matches the profiles of those users to find people who are almost the same. When you have data of that, uh, of that vast magnitude, all those people together, you can really find extremely accurate correlations. And there's absolutely nothing that rivals that that we know of. Yeah, and I think from an efficacy standpoint, the targeting is really unrivaled. And at this point, there's more daily active users on the mobile you know, application than there are on desktop. So it means that the ability to target the right people at the right time is imperative, especially from a mobile app acquisition standpoint. Yeah, I think I uh, read yesterday that something like 70% of Facebook's monthly active users are on mobile now. So it's, it's incredible the scale they have. In order to um, make sure that this is an entire love fest, maybe we can talk about some of the challenges. Um, you guys have been doing this for a while and you, you see a lot of clients. What are some of the things on Facebook that you think could improve or that you think uh, clients have trouble with uh, in, their, in their programs? Sure, I'll take that. Um, so we just talked about Facebook being a platform for acquiring quality. And 
I guess one of the questions I deal with quite a lot is, okay, we can bring quality, but let's place more ads, let's get more and more and more, let's get quantity on the same time. And you can drive scale from Facebook, but Facebook is obviously very conscious of the fact that they need to protect their user experience and they cannot bombard users with ads constantly. So I think one of the challenges for us, for Facebook, is finding new places to put ads, uh, new ways to reach users, uh, perhaps monetizing other products as well that you have on mobile through Facebook. Um, it would be really interesting to see, I don't know what's going to happen, but it would be really interesting uh, to see what happens with Instagram and how that fits into Facebook's monetization structure on mobile in the future. Yeah, from my perspective, I think we see some challenges on the SDK integration with our customers, which is pretty common, but you know, it is kind of a concern that we, we walk through. Um, on top of that, I think tracking and making sure that we're able to track the right things at the right time with the right third party vendors is kind of something we are up against. Yeah, we're seeing the same uh, issues, but I'd add to that um, creative again. Um, what we're finding is that uh, when you have the right-hand side ad units, uh, you could have winning creative that would have uh, strong CTRs for a month, uh, maybe a year. Uh, now we're seeing that when it gets into the news feed, uh, people are expecting it to be news. Uh, and they may only see it once, and they only want to see it once. So as an advertiser, you need to be very willing to switch out your creative, try new things. Uh, to see what works because your click-through rate and therefore your CPIs or cost could change dramatically uh, based on the efficacy of the creative that you're putting in front of the users. I see no challenges. Um, <laughs> no, I prefer to call them development <laughs> needs, They're development opportunities. opportunities. Um, I think the, the, the number one thing that nobody else said you here. You own some stock, right? That was <laughs> that, I don't actually because my, my whole life is tied. No, but so um, the, the biggest thing that nobody else said here is, is just complexity of the platform. And you know, if you're a client trying to navigate and understand, it's part of the reason we have businesses, obviously. But the complexity of the platform for an advertiser on day one is, can be a little bit challenging. And I think that's something that Facebook's working to, to really fix and, and rectify. The second thing is Facebook moves at an incredible pace. It's really it's a breathtaking sort of move fast, break things. And, and I think that pace sometimes can be a challenge for, for clients as well as partners like us. What do you, um, we've talked a little bit about Instagram and where Facebook has come to today. What are some of the things you, you see in the future? Uh, we all hear about rumors of different mechanisms they're launching or testing or targeting or you know, moving fast. And uh, you guys have a, a, real, a pretty unique insight into what they're planning, um, having been with them for a while. What do you think are some of the next moves they'll be making or some of the things that this audience would be interested in hearing about that you think Facebook will be taking us next? I think, I mean, uh, the thing I'm most excited about was talked a lot about in the earnings call yesterday is that the the paradigm of a feed, you know, or news feed, which is what Facebook invented, is an incredibly is an amazing paradigm. It's a shift, and it's something that we all our eyes are glued to all the time. We're five, ten people are scrolling through it right now as I talk. Um, it's incredibly engaging, and, and it's a very powerful thing. And and more importantly, it works. And and the the you know thing I like to say is it's the best piece of ad real estate since the paid search results page. You see one to two percent click-through rates on it. You're, we're, we're doing everything from generating financial services leads to driving mobile installs of games to selling shoes to driving brand engagement all through this amazing thing called the feed. And I think that feed is going to become pervasive not only with Facebook but with other platforms. And it's only five, ten percent of the way there in terms of matching things going forward. So feed to me is is the innovation now that Facebook has really driven and it's something that they invented five, six years ago, but now from an advertiser's perspective, it's a really powerful distribution mechanism. Uh, from our standpoint, again, we look at things uh, from three standpoints, creative, uh, targeting, and optimization. So some of the developments that we see from the creative standpoint is probably additional ad units. So um, right now we have the news feed app install and um, Fairly, I mean, we have the straightforward ad units, but video is probably going to come. So that's going to pose a whole other set of opportunities and challenges. Um, you might have things like click to call, where straight from the, your mobile app, you can, uh, and, and you're in Facebook, you might be able to call the advertiser and take action right there. So there's a bunch of stuff that they can do on the creative and ad unit side that they, they haven't done yet that's coming up. Uh, from a targeting standpoint, I think one of the things that we're excited about down the road is uh, retargeting. So they have the Facebook exchange, 
uh, where you can do uh, retargeting that's only available right now on Canvas. So uh, I think you know once they solve some of the tracking problems, they'll open that up to um, uh, to mobile as well. And uh, lastly, in optimization, um, we think there's really the opportunity to improve on the custom audiences and the lookalikes. So they're doing very well for some of our clients, uh, but we think um, there's more um, down the road um, for uh, for lookalikes uh, and custom and custom audiences. Um, and Internally for us uh, at Nanigans, we're working on some tools where you can leverage what Facebook is building, um, such as the custom audiences, to find what's unique about your users. So uh, we have a tool called the Affinity Analysis tool where uh, if you look at a custom audience, you can build keyword sets uh, to find what's special about your audience. So there's just a bunch of opportunity down the road to leverage data uh, to improve the performance. Yeah, I'm really... Uh excited about how uh, graph search is going to develop on mobile um, because obviously Facebook as a platform has been social and it's about being it's about uh, creating demand that isn't otherwise there perhaps but with graph search you can add a layer of intentionality to the way people consume advertising on Facebook and it's a interface that just makes sense on mobile and it's separate from newsfeed so it's it's more real estate for ads I mean, when you can tie that into localized advertising and you know what did what restaurants did my friends eat at for example with social context attached to that you really have a whole new board game on facebook to complement the already existing newsfeed ads going last is hard <laughs> Um, no, I think there's a lot of opportunities for, um, you know, Facebook has just streamlined a lot of their ads, and I think that's really impactful for how we work with customers. So, but there still are opportunities when you look at something like Instagram and how they could leverage that. And I think, you know, we're really excited about that opportunity. Uh, one other potential technology down the road might be location. So if you're on mobile, maybe the ads, depending on where you are, as it learns your, your patterns, maybe it shows you different ads if you're at home, on your way to work, versus you know, you're visiting Seattle. So that's maybe something that they might tackle down the road. Interesting. Um, and Mandy, maybe we'll let you go first on this next one just to, uh, to, to make sure that you get your chance. Um, what advice would you give to advertisers who are just starting out on Facebook? So a lot of folks, um, are just approaching this, and especially on mobile, you know, they might be new to they might be new to mobile advertising. They definitely are probably new to Facebook mobile advertising, um, since it's only a couple six months old or so. Um, so, what advice would you give to those people who are just starting out and how to approach this and how to evaluate it and, and how to plan for a future where this is going to be a big part of the mobile advertising audience? Yeah, I would say you should work with Shift, and that should be a good first step. Um, but outside of that, I would say know your, your end goal, right? Know your KPI because from, again, a holistic approach, if you're not really you know, looking at this from an ROI, from a long time value, for all of the, the lifetime value, if you're not really looking at it that way and you don't know what you're really optimizing against, it can be really ineffective. So I think looking at this from what's your real end game and starting from there, mobile should be a part of what you're doing, but it should be a holistic view of marketing and your entire approach. Work with a dot to me um, and get a good BI on the list and make sure your product is really, really good and you can't fail. I just work with nanigans. Um, <laughs> I started a trend. <laughs> yeah, I started. Well, we, we all do the similar things, but um, uh, our, again, our, uh, we think advertisers should move away from a focus on cost per install uh, and think more about how much they're getting from a return on ad spend uh, standpoint. So not all installs are the same. And we think the future is really around not even looking at how much you're getting from a return on ad spend for the initial transaction, but for the lifetime uh, of that c customer. So if you have someone who comes in and costs you a dollar or ten dollars to acquire, but you know that they're going to make seven purchases and the lifetime value is sixty, um, that might be interesting and you may not want to cap your CPI at five dollars. Um, I would start a lot simpler, I guess. I mean, uh, you know, to me it's keep it really simple. Do two, like run two ads into two segments and see how they work and, and kind of get a flavor for it. Keep in mind, I mean, we've said this a lot of different people up here, that creative matters a lot. Uh, driving click-through rate on Facebook is important for them and, and therefore important for you. Uh, and, and I think just, just keep it really, really simple and try to get the basic unit economics to work out. And then once you get the unit economics to work out, you can scale it. And once you scale to a certain size, then you can call AMPUSH. 
um, <laughs> and we'll talk, you know, and, and figure it out. But I think that's sort of how I would drive things forward and keep it, you know, very simple. Excellent. There's too many options that can get very confusing. Yeah. Um, and maybe, uh, folks, in a couple minutes, we'll maybe do one more question or two for the panel, and then we'll open up for questions from the audience. So if you have questions, definitely start thinking about them, and we'll, um, we'll open it up. Uh, the, the last uh, one thing that I've been wondering about, uh, if, if Mark Zuckerberg were here, um, what would you tell him? What advice would you give to him with this? You know, they've just had a blowout quarter. It sounds like they have a great product, according to this panel of experts. What would you tell him um, to do with Facebook mobile ads or, or in general with targeting on their platform? You've stumped us. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. I mean, I think those two vectors that I talked about earlier continue to go down them. Like, you have this massive scale, but you allow for precision, so just keep doing those things. So whether it's location and being able to offer that as an advertising component, whether it's activities somebody takes, I think continuing to go down this, we have a lot of scale, and yet we can let you be really precise, is one of the most amazing things about the platform. Um, and then I think continue to build out and test, you know, don't abandon open graph, don't abandon word of mouth opportunities and referrals. I think that stuff's uh, super important. And then the third one I would throw out is just sort of, uh, you know, more transparency for advertisers in terms of how ads are served. I think, you know, if you think about um, the Google auction in terms of the way, you know, search works, you know your position, you know everything about your ad is very clear and it's a very transparent situation. The way Facebook serves ads is still a bit of a mystery even to, even to us, I would say. Um, we have some idea, but we, I don't know how the bid auction is working versus my ad versus something else, I think that would be helpful. So we're, we're all really dependent on Facebook, so this, must, this might sound like some ass kissing, but uh, I'd say great job, <laughs> and uh, that things, uh, things are moving uh, in the right direction. Um, a year ago, uh, when Nanigans was working with Facebook, there was a, uh, there was a challenge because I think there was a, a big focus at Facebook on the users. So it was, uh, we, all we care about is the customer experience and the user experience, and advertising is kind of secondary to, to what we're thinking. At least that was, at least the, the vibe that was coming across. But I think over time, they've, uh, they've realized the importance of having uh, PMDs and having advertisers on there um, as part of their business. And they've made a strong move uh, by developing their client services group. Um, so I think they've, they've made a lot of the right moves. So a year ago, I would have had a lot more uh, to say uh, advice-wise on how you can improve things, but it seems like they're, they're listening and um, they're moving things forward. Yeah, I would say uh, just keep on empowering uh, the, the preferred marketing developers, people like us, because we really have the resources to innovate and, well, we, we innovate by competing with each other and building cool functionality and uh, extra services and technology that help advertisers. So really, we're, we're kind of the ambassadors for innovation on Facebook. So keep on giving us the tools uh, to simplify the complexity for our end advertisers. Yeah, and I would say, you know, keep iterating, keep launching products that are really impactful to the end customer. And, you know, make sure that we're refining targeting and allowing tracking in a really productive way so we can do analytics that really capitalize on, you know, end of, you know, ROI and CPAs and the real things that our customers are looking for. Excellent. One, um, one, one last, uh, last question here, maybe before we open it up or get towards opening up. What, what do you see as the main competitors for Facebook uh, on mobile? So, you know, Facebook has a, a, a deep and easily targeted or more easily targeted or targetable audience. What do you see as alternative or competitors or threats to them out there for advertisers who are looking to build a brand on mobile? What would you identify as like, you know, this might be a pool of inventory that's a threat or these guys look like they're going in a, in a dangerous direction for Facebook? Well, unless you can show me another platform that has 819 million monthly active users, 219 of which only use mobile to log in, I really don't think I can answer that question effectively. I agree. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's There's two that I'll throw out there just for fun. Um, <laughs> the Apple App Store and Google Play. Those are the only two places that have that kind yeah. of scale. Um, upon which they could do something interesting with. And I mean, they're not really competitors, but they could be competitors. Yeah, and what we're seeing is that Facebook has definitely established itself as a must buy on mobile. So there's, yeah, there's not really an alternative right now for what you can do on Facebook. It's pretty unique. 
Um, so if you had a question, um, go ahead and raise your hand. We got, here's your chance to learn everything you want to about Facebook. Hi, uh, Adam Miller from Amobi. Uh, one question I did have was around view through attribution. And specifically, just I think we touched very briefly on attribution. Uh, Facebook, at least to, to some extent on mobile, does count view through attribution. I guess the question I do have is, does that run the risk of them, I guess, taking credit for too much? And especially if they're not revealing that to clients up front, or I guess, what's your take on view through attribution versus click attribution, especially when Currently, the mobile industry, you know, 95% of it only relies on click. Um, from our standpoint, it's a, it's a setting in the platform. So uh, we, we usually do click. Um, so it's not applicable. I mean, in, in our platform, Facebook allows us to divide between uh, post-click attribution and post-impression. So you can count either one or the other. Most of the advertisers we work with only care about post-click because, you know, you can't, we still can't say that you can prove that uh, an impression leads to a conversion at this stage and nobody wants to pay for it. I think it's just a data point that you need to take into account. And I think that at the end of the day, that in a partnership with a client, they can decide how they value it uh, and why they value it in a certain way. Clearly, it, it matters in some, some respect, especially if you, uh, which we do oftentimes, kind of create a control group to show that sans impressions, you're actually, you're getting less. Um, so there's some sort of factor attached to it. Yeah, I think it's interesting. Um, it matters more so when it's on desktop, when you're looking at from a DR channel, it makes a lot of sense. From a mobile tracking standpoint, it probably right now doesn't make as much sense, but I think eventually we will get to the point where that data gets more reliable and you're able to do more multi-channel attribution and multi-touch attribution. And I think that's when the game can get really interesting. Yeah, this, uh, Paul from TabChoy. Uh, given that, you know, as you said, um, you know, Facebook is totally unique and it's like a must-buy. You know, what do you project in terms of what uh, the demand supply curve is going to look like over the course of the next, you know, year, year and a half, in terms of pricing? I think, uh, you know, no one knows for sure, but I think it's important to remember that Facebook controls the supply side of the curve, um, and by no means do they have any kind of rule that says every five five posts on your mobile feed need to be a mobile app install ad. And if they did that the way a traditional publisher does it, like NY Times or something like that, you, you'd see a more common marketplace, but you actually don't have that. And so when you have sort of, you know, <coughs> supply monopoly, you know, the, the way that it's not an elastic curve, right? You can't just move the way that typically it moves. And, and, and so I think it's really important to remember that. And, and when we think about that, we think there's a lot more, that means there's a lot more inventory opportunity and therefore pricing will remain much much more stable than most people probably think when you think of a typical new channel for inventory. So typically you go, oh man, this is hot, it's cheap, I'm going to go buy it. I think it's a very different situation in this case um, because of the way, not to mention engagement's growing and all this stuff is growing, but even then I don't think that, that the inventory wasn't just dumped out in a, in a flat way and said, have at it. That, that's not the way it was controlled or managed. Yeah, and uh, I think from, sorry. Yeah, how do you see the uh, inventory growing? Is it more people coming to mobile or it's them opening up additional in inventory somehow on mobile, new ad units? It's both. I, I, I think okay. it's both. I mean, I think it's going to grow, continue to grow, but I, I, think the, I think the inventory is being throttled. I don't have, you know, official information or, or data for that, but I think it's being throttled and it's being throttled based on how people are matching and what news feed is serving to who. Yeah, and, and yeah, we're... We're speculating, but um, it seems to me that the, the demand is rising faster than the supply. So that means higher prices, uh, but I don't know. Yeah, and I think from the demand side, it's, um, you know, there's the maturation of like the gaming industry, but we have a lot of other verticals that haven't capitalized on apps yet, at least to the fullest extent. So I think the demand side is growing faster, but you know, that doesn't mean that there can't be more supply, and I do think it's a good point on what Facebook plans to do on that, and if we find out, that would be awesome. And I think, you know, the other thing is even still, and I don't know what, what you guys are seeing at Nanigans as an example, but the LTV sort of versus volume equation is still very positive. Like, we have advertisers where we're driving installs for a dollar an install for like a productivity or entertainment app. Those convert to paid subscribers at five to 10%. And then from there, you get $120 LTV for somebody because they're signing up for a subscription for an entertainment app. Um, you know, you could double or triple <laughs> the, the pricing there, and it would still be 
a fantastic buy, you know thing for that company to buy. So I, I think we're a long way away from from any sort of negative, hugely negative effects occurring in that marketplace. Hi, this is Andy with Appia. Uh, just a quick question. Maybe you guys could talk a little bit towards the Facebook strategy of supporting direct advertiser buys versus buys from networks representing um, the portfolio of advertisers and, and whether you think that the tools are there uh, to support that large scale buying or whether they will get developed further in the future. Okay. And you're saying, can I go, I, I, I have a bunch of clients, and I'm looking for things for them. Yep. I want to optimize right. across them. That's right. I don't know that Facebook would be, I think that the, they wouldn't be too happy about that. <laughs> I wouldn't talk too much about that. Um, I don't know. I, if I'm following you correctly, I, I, the answer is no, but it's not no because they're not going to offer. It's just like they don't want one advertiser's dollar spend being at all conflated with another advertiser dollar spend and it, any kind of like intermix between those two. I don't know if you guys... Coming, coming. A workout, Peter. Yeah. Hi, I'm Jeff with Solemn Consulting. I'm curious what your thoughts are about how interactive television will come into play. With Facebook? Yeah, oh. Facebook ads or well it. I have interesting dreams about this. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I think. Uh, <laughs> I think I share your dreams. <laughs> go on, you go ahead. <laughs> no, well, so there's, a, you know, a couple of days ago there was an article that actually, you know, Twitter tends to focus on being the king of TV and TV interaction. I think because of the way newsfeed works, where it's not a fire hose the same way Twitter is, people assume that there's not, and they, they did a study and realized that there's 5x the amount of activity for a given TV show on Facebook than there's on Twitter. So that's an interesting stat worth mentioning. Uh, the, the interactive TV bit, uh, maybe that we share is, you know, open graph, for those of you familiar with it, the idea that I go to my TV and I say, Jesse Puji is signed in, sync my Facebook profile. And does anybody watch Netflix with open graph? Or see that your friends are watching certain shows? Like I watched, you know, Rest of Development last night. So, you know, the idea that you can sign in and have a customized experience for who you are as an individual, and then that gets shared and shared across your network, and the idea that you could hit your remote and say, I want to watch a show that 20 of my friends or that my friends find the best, and it's all kind of an automated interactive experience with Open Graph. That's sort of my, the dream. I think it's also Zuck's dream too, but it's still pretty far away from happening. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm sure you've all noticed now you can, uh, when you're writing your status on Facebook, you can say that you watched something. And I don't think that's a coincidence. It's, you're creating an action on the Open Graph, which I think I share the same vision. You know, you're watching TV one day and you want to know what to watch and you can see the rating that your friends gave a particular TV show in a, in a recent time period, it makes a lot of sense. TV is a social experience as well. And there's other things like, have you heard of Bluefin, Bluefin Labs? So it's a company that Twitter acquired. Um, does some really interesting, what I call television retargeting. So it literally knows when you're watching an episode of TV or when you're tweeting about it. So I'm watching Desperate Housewives and I'm like tweeting about it. And um, it sees that I'm tweeting about it in the same period of time and then delivers an ad message to me about, a com and about an advertiser who advertised during the same exact segment. So there might have been a commercial for State Farm and it actually you know, realized that I watched Us for Housewives, State Farm ran a TV commercial, let me, sh let me ping this guy because he saw that. It's really cool. So I, I assume you know, Facebook can, can and will do similar things. Hi, I'm uh, Jay Jessam. I run a company called Apneek. Uh, I have a question for you about uh, on Facebook, when you're buying app, mobile app install ads, uh, there's opportunities to do demographic targeting, and then there's also a bunch of you know, really precise interests that you can specify. In your experience, is one more effective than the other? It, it depends on the client. We, um, we can't say across the board uh, which one works the best, but the Facebook broad categories um, have been very effective, and keyword targeting has also been effective. Uh, one of the challenges, though, with uh, keyword targeting is that sometimes it's not as obvious as you would think. Um, for instance, uh, one of our uh, clients' game—it's a you know just a simple game. They, when we did an analysis uh, using one of our tools, we found out that it really appeals to Republicans uh, for some reason, reason. Um, and that's not something that would have been obvious uh, just when you looked at the game. It has no political affiliation, but. 
uh, when you're doing the keyword targeting on Facebook, it's so rich that sometimes there's some correlations that are not obvious. So um, it helps to have a tool. I would actually um, talk about another kind of targeting. I mean, we one of the, the benefits of being a PMD is we have access to more targeting possibilities, not just the, the basic interests and likes who, you, you know, you don't know when somebody liked something or why they liked it or if they still like it now. But uh, the beauty of the open graph is that you can target people based on what they really do in the ecosystem. And uh, so one of the abilities that we have, and it's especially powerful for something like games, which publish a lot of actions on the open graph every day, um, you know, you can target people essentially based on their behavior, what they're doing in other games, if they're getting to advanced stages in those games. And you can make the analogy with similar applications, dating, finance, or anything else that has uh, integration on the open graph. So to be able to target users by what they actually do and that they do it within a recent time period is far more powerful, I think, than anything you can do through uh, Facebook's standard uh, power editor or ad manager capabilities. Yeah, and I think it's it's a lot of testing and learning. I mean, we all have run a lot of campaigns. We have a lot of industry data to help us inform our decisions, but a lot of the times it's really the optimization strategy behind it that you can see the effectiveness. Uh, this is Kevin from Hotel Tonight. I had a question about um, Instagram video over here. Uh, so there's Instagram video and there's Twitter Vine. I think a... Um, a vi mobile video ad unit on Facebook is inevitable at this point. So I was wondering what your thoughts were on the kind of impact that could have on our industry. I think one of the most interesting examples um, is mobile app installs and kind of just to tie it all together. You know, there were a lot of ad, there are a lot of ad networks that drive mobile installs. There's a lot of ways you can drive, drive those. And Facebook invented this ad unit six, nine months ago. And it became by far the largest volume source and by best quality, by the way, to get mobile downloads. And I think what you're going to see with video is the exact same thing, is that overnight, almost, it's going to become the largest inventory source for video advertising um, because of the scale of that platform and then all the quality and the precision factors. So I think it's going to be, be very big. And then you know, Instagram, I think they're going to wait on. But I think ultimately, that will also be a massive opportunity in inventory source. Yeah, and I agree. It's going to be, um, it's going to be huge. Uh, the question is, uh, what kind of video do you show on Facebook in the news feed? Um, is it going to be the same as a 30-second spot uh, that you have on TV today? Uh, or is it going to be something completely different? Uh, and, and, and my guess would be it's going to be something different. It may be shorter or longer. I don't know. Maybe um, um, just different. Because what we've seen uh, from the creative side in, uh, when you add the social layer is that people don't respond to um, traditional advertising. It, it really needs to be customized to Facebook. I think video ads are inevitable, obviously. I think it's going to bring in, a, you know, we talked about performance advertising up till now, but this is going to bring in huge traditional advertising budgets because uh, I, I guess the problem with video advertising online up till now is just people engaging enough with uh, platforms and products where they can see enough of it. But uh, Facebook is, you know, we gave the stats already. People are using it every day for a very long time, and there's a huge potential, almost as much as TV to some extent, uh, to broadcast your message on an exposure kind of goal rather than a performance goal. Yeah, what I'm trying, trying to figure out is though you're looking at your news feed, do you click while you're trying to find your friend's pictures, do you click on a video to watch it? Is that something that people are going to want to do, or are they going to have to figure something else out? Or delivery mechanism? Yeah, I think people will uh, inevitably click on it. I can imagine it looking a lot like the kind of mobile app install ad that everywhere on it is clickable and leads through to some kind of uh, destination page. Uh, but, you know, like I said, I think they'll cater both for the performance advertisers who want to lead uh, the user somewhere to do something. But there, sh there should be, from my point of view, just the ability to show a video and kind of count the video views without necessarily taking the user outside of Facebook as well. A lot more Old Spice guys. <laughs> <laughs> Something we've seen from the entertainment side uh, with Facebook, and you mentioned all the, the great traffic that comes from Facebook, is a challenge is that they're in Facebook, they're in that environment, and that's what they're doing. As we uh, put short form video in front of them, even, you know, this is our ABC, so we have our own content serving our own ads. Uh, something as we try and drive them to either our app or our products and watch the full episode, 
we see real low engagement because that is what they're doing. So, you know, they may be interested in a short form video that's embedded, but when you try and drive them away or, or really put something a little bit longer in front of them, there's a challenge there because what they're doing is interacting with Facebook. I, it's a, that's a great point. I, I think yesterday on the earnings call, Zuck talked about this thing and, and you know, I, this isn't for sure going to happen, but I think it's one of the really exciting opportunities and visions for Facebook. Is it becoming a utility for data and information? And we talked about graph search earlier. I think one of the things most people don't realize about graph search is like, oh, my friend who lives in Boston and works at Anagans, right? And, and, and that's who you find. I think well, the second people start to realize that they can get a better restaurant recommendation or a better hotel recommendation because they're tapping their social networks, the utility that people find in that will change the way we all use Facebook. And so if you think about what Grass Search is pointing to, the new news feed, which lets you, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but you can click on music only. And you can just scroll through, what, what music are my friends listening to? You can click through pictures. What are the pictures of my friends that they're listening to? So as long as you find value in your friends, which I think we all do, I think what's going to happen with stuff like that is you're going to say like movies and then actually rather than I'm here to look at you know baby pictures of my friends or my normal social network, I'm not here to do that anymore. Now I'm going to change my newsfeed so I can actually see movie recommendations or product recommendations. And I think Grassroots is going to drive that and I think newsfeed. So that's a change in user behavior which is super, super hard. Uh, but I think it, it's, it's possible and I think that that's the thing that, you know, if you look, read Zuck's comments yesterday, that's what he wants to build. That's what, they, that's what Facebook wants to build. And, and, you know, we think it's going to happen or we're, we're bulls generally. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting way to, to think about it because I was just picturing if it was in my news feed and it was a short video and it was about a product that one of my friends recommended and liked and I didn't know about it, I might click on that to watch it to find out, you know, why he likes it. Um, so they're going to have to figure out a way to engage users in the news feed because, again, they, they, once they're in the news feed, they're there to see their friends' pictures and it's really hard to uh, interrupt them without having negative con consequences, like you were saying. The power of open yeah. graph is doesn't, people don't realize it yet today. Like, and then you're not going to give up your privacy or let Facebook authenticate if you have no idea why you're doing it. If you really realize the power of that and you, get, you reap the utility, no one reaps utility today of open graph, but the second that graph search starts to really catch and people get why they should be sharing that because their friends can use it and they can use their friends and vice versa, I think that that's going to be, that's, I think that's the plan for what it's worth. Great. Thank, thank you, everyone. Um, I just have one final question. and I think uh, uh, all of us certainly learned a lot. I know I learned a few things or many things about Facebook. And if anybody has questions, certainly approach these folks are the experts um, throughout the day. If you were, theoretically, if you were at a conference on a beautiful day in Seattle and your words were the last statement people heard before they went to the bar on this beautiful day, what would that statement be? What would your parting thoughts be to a, a room full of folks about Facebook mobile advertising on a beautiful afternoon in Seattle before they hit the bar? Uh, short and sweet. I, I think it's just the beginning. So there's, it's, um, we're really early in this. Yeah, I'd say uh, adjust your strategy. Um, forget bursting. Forget bringing... Tencent users from the Philippines, go to Facebook and find some real quality acquisition, www.adotomy.com. <laughs> I would say it works, you should do it, now go to the bar. I say go drink. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Peter. Thanks. Uh, thank, you for, yeah, thank you for the panel. Thank you.